It is suddenly the offseason for Florida State football. This is kind of an odd number show at 136. It just doesn't seem like a whole lot's going on. But I just have a feeling this is going to be a historic show, epic show, because these two guys have it in them. You just built that up. Good God. <laughs> Jason Parker, NBC6, Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day. Got to get over there to Noel Game Day. Jump on Patreon. Look at uh, Noel Game Day. That's a must. Now we're talking Florida State football for the next hour. Here we go. But before we talk Florida State football, we have to bring back an old school tradition here with Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. It's Jason Parker's shout outs. I got two shout outs. We got to do it off the top of the show. We have to. I'm sorry, Mark. First of all, shout out to the one Florida State football team that actually wins. You are three-time national champion, Florida State women's soccer team. Shout out to the girls. Yeah. Winning Football. BKs on Monday night. Shout out beating BYU. Shout out to the Lady Knowles there. But more importantly, shout out to the man to my right, Logan <sighs> F. Robinson, NoelGameDay.com, who this weekend will become a graduate of the Florida State University. Let's congratulate Logan. It only took 12 Thank years, you. but he finally graduated from Florida State. Finally. Florida. I did. Now I won't have to get any kind of heat or made fun of from Jason anymore. No. It's going to feel nice. Just like, you know, I can be like you. Right. You will be getting a call once a week from the Alumni Association asking for money. It's going to happen, even if awesome. you are in the Alumni Association. Oh, how, does it feel? how does it feel to finally be a Florida State graduate? It feels amazing. The best part is no assignments due. I think that's the biggest thing here that's by far the best feeling there's nothing do nothing on my canvas app that we use to see what i've got to do for the week or what's got, what i'm really going to do that night because i wait to the last minute so being done with that and just having some relaxation is going to be cool and now I get to focus fully on ng and where we where we really get to set a game plan on what we want to do for the next couple of years here is going to be nice and more shows more things to hang out, more time to hang out with you guys. And because uh -huh. there's multiple times this year, I've had to not be able to come on here because there's just been so many things going on. Five classes this semester. I wanted to shoot myself. Oh. Um, why? I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. So then I wouldn't have to take classes in the spring. So I just said, you know what? Screw it. Let's combine it five up. and fall. Grind. Big, big Get mistake. it done. Big somehow, it. somehow survived. A lot, a lot of beer helped though this semester. I will oh, give it that. A lot of well, beer helped. To anybody trying to graduate, beer is key. Mark, Mark, and I will make sure we are gentle here with your final exam. This is your final exam before graduation, evaluating uh -oh. the disaster of the twenty twenty one Florida State Central football team. Oh, great! I have to go down there and write a paper on it. Absolutely, one hundred percent. More of a roller coaster ride than anything. I feel like it was double, double entertaining straight. to say the least. Absolutely. Can't lie. This was a very. This last season was extremely. Entertaining. And they the brought it back. They brought it back. Five and three the last eight games. We can focus on that. And, and it sounds like Logan, after he gets this thing ramped up there at Noel Game Day and projects mm -hmm. out for this two to three year plan he's building, uh, I'm going to hire him as a consultant. Uh, he can build uh, me a two or three year plan. <laughs> blow blow this we up. We got a long ways to go. Let me see the bachelor. I got to see the diploma. Jason told me okay. I've got to see the diploma first before I do anything for consulting because he not, wants to believe it first. I believe you graduate. I believe you have enough of a GPA to graduate. I think even your drunk mistake can get you a GPA to graduate. I <laughs> so Golly. Jason, while we're still waiting for the fans to uh, the viewers to show up here, the one thing I will ask of you is when you set up Logan for the 30 minute mark of what you mm -hmm. always usher us into you're going to have to remind everyone you're going to have to let everyone know at that point because we're going to have a new audience that uh to, to celebrate we're going to have to do a double oh, yeah. celebration absolutely we, of the we will, graduation we, we will take yes. care of it we will take yeah. care of it stay tuned in about 20 minutes we got you on that one absolutely so in the meantime while logan's leaving florida state other people are leaving florida state too for logan's, other reasons logan's taking about five people with him logan obviously in the past week alone you've had three Transfers, three players entering the transfer portal, two players entering the NFL draft. I mean, honestly, Logan, what what is going on? Oh man, that, we we expected a, a lot of transfers to happen, and most of these so far make sense. I don't think there's been any big surprises. Really, the only one was 
a couple weeks ago whenever it happened to be Chuba Purdy or Chuba Purdy a while back. But other than that, these are kind of guys that we expected a little bit. Um, and definitely guys like the Kalen Brooks had him noted down on maybe leaving or finding different endeavors after he uh, has graduated from Florida State. And then you've got True Thompson, who this year, kind of coming into the season, we were expecting to see him fill the void and building some depth there for Odell Hagans, but just didn't seem to be the case, and he was dealing with injuries. Um, and then you have Jaleel McCray, a veteran linebacker there. That just didn't come in. Just didn't – things weren't clicking for him. That's where Deloach came and blew up this year and didn't happen for McCray. So, um you know, so far, these transfers isn't much of a surprise. I think soon there's going to be some potential guys that are in that too deep, even a, a starter or two that could either make the decision to move on to other institutions or go pro and what they feel like they can. You know, it's just so far you got a few offensive linemen, too, that have left. Um, so this opens up a lot of room for Mike Norbell and what they want to do in the transfer portal moving forward. Looking at the two guys who declared for the NFL draft, obviously the both of the linebacker position, the Callum Brooks, obviously the son of mm -hmm. seminal great Derek Brooks from the Tampa area, Emmett Rice from down here in the South Florida area from Miami. Both of them declared for the NFL draft. Now, other than I believe Emmett Rice had a, an interception against Duke in 2017, to Callum Brooks gave up a touchdown, the winning touchdown for my, against Miami in 2018. Mm -hmm. There aren't a lot of great moments for either guy. So I guess my question to you, and both are talented individuals. Evan Rice obviously last year dealt with injuries that sidelined him the entire season last year. What, what do you think is behind their move to go to the NFL? Honestly, because both of them on the surface, it doesn't look like they have a lot on a, to put together a highlight reel from this past season. What do you think led to their decision to go to the NFL? I think Emmett Rice just kind of was dealing with so many injuries and there was some potential that maybe he would have a chance at locking down a waiver, a medical waiver for where he'd be eligible this upcoming season and this next season. And just didn't seem to be the case. And he dealt with an injury in the spring, didn't get to see the field really at all um, this season. He was dressed up for senior day just for the ceremony practically. Um, wasn't fully 100% in my opinion after being at practices. But, you know, Emmett Rice, you would you wish that you could have him back next year. Just not going to be the case because he brings veteran leadership along with experience and is nice in the running game and was playing really well there near the end of the season last year. And it seemed like he was getting back into his groove after his previous injury when he played against um, Florida in 2019. So Emmett Rice just kind of – Know, up and down career, but I, I think he has a potential uh, in the in his next stop, wherever it is going to be. Um, to Kalen Brooks, I think you know, I don't think he's going uh, not an NFL route. Um, you know, maybe if he wants to go into other things, uh, but not going to be a he's not going to be drafted on this upcoming. I uh, hope maybe get picked up as a free agent, but I just don't even see, I just don't see that route. I think that was just kind of a nice way of just putting out there saying I'm done. I'm graduated. I'm not playing next year. Uh, Cause he had another year of eligibility due to COVID-19 and yeah, that kind of does it for him. I see where Brooks actually had a pretty decent uh, beginning of his career to Florida state uh, there. 2018 had uh, played in 11 games, 46 tackles, three tackles for loss contributed that first season. And then since then, he hasn't really been on the field. Yeah, he was the one who came in, like we said, obviously he did have the legacy, uh, you know, as being the son of arguably one of the best, if not the best linebackers in Florida State history. So that's where it was puzzling to me that that he just went on that downhill slide so quickly. And mm -hmm. I wonder, Logan, what, what do you think that was about? Because I could, you could see he wasn't getting as much playing time, especially towards, towards his past season as he did as a freshman. What do you, what do you, what was behind that? I think the biggest thing, I, he came in undersized. I don't think that helps mm -hmm. a lot there. I don't think, I don't think as a staff they were really expecting a whole whole ton ton from him. But he started off his career nicely. But there's just other guys that were talent more talented, and uh, he got passed up by true freshmen coming in. We saw a lot of D, uh, DJ Lundy along with Stephen Dix last season, and that only continued. We're talking two seasons ago as freshmen, and then this past season, 
as redshirt uh, sophomores play a whole lot more too. So um, DJ Lundy actually being a starter. So just kind of passed up on the depth chart, but best of luck to him. Um, I think he's a, he's a great kid. And, you know, we've, I've talked with coach or Mr. Brooks on our, on our show before, and uh, he was very excited about his son coming to Florida state. So wish him the best of luck. And, you know, if there's a chance for him, I hope he gets after it. Hope it, hope he takes advantage of it. You mentioned obviously now back into the transfer portal, Florida state has not hesitated to go mm-hmm. through the transfer portal dating back to when Jimbo Fisher was that coach of this team. Who are some of the guys Florida state may be looking at? guys who are in the transfer portal now. Obviously, the news today about Max Johnson, the quarterback at LSU, son of another Florida State legend, Brad Johnson. Yeah. Is Florida State going to make a move after another lefty quarterback? <laughs> Is Florida State going to make a move for offensive linemen? What are you hearing? Yeah, I think so far Florida State is just going to – See what's popping with the Johnson brothers. See what's going on there. See if there's any interest. You know, Brad Johnson, from things I've heard before, the relationship isn't too great. It could be better. Um, and that really stinks because his sons are very talented. You got a quarterback and a tight end. Tight end, even probably more talented than his brother, at quarterback. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Florida State would love to bring both of those guys in to build depth in the quarterback along with having a – tight end a, a really good threat at tight end Florida State hasn't had in a little while um so you know that I think we'll see how that transpires that was just about yesterday late about this time yesterday so you know that that's gonna have to continue and we'll see if Norvell Dillingham uh, want to make a move there and 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 get a visit set up but we'll see you would love to see uh, two legacy kids come to Tallahassee, definitely with the talent and leaving LSU. Those definitely surprise uh, to many. But I think Florida State's going to play patient here. There's a ton and ton of more kids that are going to hit the portal, including after the spring. After spring ball's over, there's going to be a lot of guys hitting the portal. Um, just playing patient right now. I don't think there's really much of anybody to – nothing really worth right now going and grabbing, then you lose that spot there at linebacker. I think they're going to play, have some patience and wait a little bit longer. There's there's going to be some more potential grabs. I just have to wait and see. I think that's what the staff's going to do. Well, Mark looks up his stats here. For the I am. I am uh, digging I deep here. Yeah. I am digging deep. Digging. So, so we man. cannot move on from this topic no. because, you know, I – I wanted to credit because I'll probably be in contact with our highlights department to dig up the one <laughs> tackle that Jalen McCluster had in his Florida State career in 2020 against Duke. One tackle. In a win. A tackle in a win. In a win. So we will have to dig that up and, and see. He was probably like 12 yards downfield, and <sighs> that was his one time. Now, I find it interesting with Thompson and McCray, they both made their biggest splash their first season. Not not anything historic, great, anything like that. But uh, Thompson had 15 tackles, a couple tackles for loss. McCray, the same thing. 15 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, and a sack. And then both of them pretty much didn't see the field hardly at all after that. Yeah, not big losses. Nothing. Yep. It won't be big losses, but I will say loss and depth, absolutely. Florida State is extremely thin. We still got to see... What Amari Gaynor wants to do too, that's something someone I'm eyeing just to see could be testing the waters what, what he wants to do. Um, and right now you're relying on just a few others, definitely DJ Lundy and Steven Dix to jump in and play a pivotal role for the future of the linebacker room. But they got to, I mean, you're looking at Omar Omar Graham Jr., who's 2020 uh, two or 2021 commit, or should I say 2022 commit, uh, coming in, who's very talented and is going to be great for Florida State in the future, but there's just not enough depth there. That's why I think Florida State's going to wait a little bit and see what they can build in the transfer portal, and I think they will. And there's there's a guy named Berse who also is – I forget which school he's from, but a very small school that is extremely talented defensive end that you lose Jermaine Johnson and you want to replace him. You want to replace Jermaine Johnson, this Verse kid. If you guys want to go look at some of his highlights, it is – very very uh fun to watch so there, there's some guys at florida states after just some part of that though is playing patient you know some of those big time transfers didn't commit until uh you know january you got 
I mean, we're talking even into the spring, a lot of them into the spring too. Um, so just, just patience. And then the second part of the show, we'll go through our, our recruiting predictions for the, the early signing day coming up on Friday. Excuse me, I apologize, on mm-hmm. Wednesday, December 15th. But real quick, yeah. obviously with one week left until early signing day, how much does losing these depth players change maybe that last minute recruiting push by Mike Norvell and by the staff? Do you think that's going to make a major change? Or do you think they're kind of just staying the course at this point? I think they're kind of just staying the course. I mean, mostly, I mean, you can't, at least for this recruiting next week, there's just so much happening. I mean, Florida State now is looking at trying to grab Gibson, who a wide receiver, former UF uh, wide receiver commit. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to grab him after he just decommitted from Florida and they're trying to make some big time moves here. They still want to grab Kevin Coleman. Just saw Kevin Coleman tweet a picture of him with Norvell and um, Dugans. Uh, they're over there visiting him in an on, on home visit. So they're, they're still trying to build and grab these guys. Even we're talking Marvin Jones Jr. Which, which is supposed to happen this week, along with Nick Saban also visiting Marvin Jones Jr. How is that going to play? Because Marvin Jones Jr. is by far, it's been that way since they've, the midnight madness that they had during the summer. Marvin Jones Jr. is the number one target for Florida State. It's Norvell versus Saban here, and it's not ever easy at all to go against Saban. He's been able to pick and grab whoever he wants, definitely in the state of Florida and even down south, and that's where Marvin Jones Jr. is. And, you know, Marvin Jones Jr., Marvin Jones Jr., yeah, he's down there by you, American He's down here? He's down here? Yeah, yeah. And it's about 10 minutes that way. Yeah, and trying to – and the thing with Marvin Jones Jr., though, I, know, I can understand Saban coming in. That is definitely a big intimidation factor. It's Nick Saban. Don't 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 give it away. At, don't give it away. We're gonna talk about it in the second half hour. The, oh, is that uh is that getting into Marvin it's, Jones Jr.? See, I, I gotta put this on the final. That's that's that's, <laughs> that's five points off your final right there. Oh no. You're down to ninety five. I'm proud of my uh, Emmett Rice stats line I'm banner. Proud of you too. It's impressive. Yeah, I like that. Very good. Yeah, Very he had good. a lot good of drivers. a lot of yeah, I mean the thing I don't know what happened. I mean, it seemed like his recovery took a lot longer mm-hmm. than expected. Um, kind of stinks. Definitely does stink because Emmett Rice was missed, I think, at least experience-wise. And he's a talented linebacker. I think he was missed quite a bit um, this last season. And it stinks that he's not going to want to – it's just, you know, kind of going the, the NFL route, which best of luck to him. It's just Florida State is so thin right now at, at linebacker. It's really bad. So we're going to be here one week – from tonight, hopefully, 6 p.m. Eastern, everybody be here, and it's National Signing Day. Florida State right now is the third-ranked class in the conference, number 12 in the nation, according to 247 Sports, with 16 hard commits. How big of a class do we expect this to be? Is this going to be in the 20 to 22 range? Low 20s. Typical class? Yeah, okay. not there. About, I think you expect maybe five more commits. So, yeah, probably about 21. So we should have some serious activity between now and then. We'll have a lot to talk about next There's going to be a lot going on. Big <laughs> National Signing Day coming. This it's, is huge for you guys. It's, it's good. This is going to be a good one because, as, as I said, we're going to talk about it in a few minutes. There's a few guys that could make or break this class, and this class could go very high if a few guys come our way. So stay tuned. This is what we've been talking about since the end of last season. Mm-hmm. about what kind of season are they going to have? How much is it going to impact the class? Yeah. Of course, the season didn't go well overall, but it could have been disastrous, and then they played much better down the stretch to even you know, salvage the look of the season, and they look to be in pretty good position to pull in a nice class. It looks better. Obviously, five wins, five and seven, much better than three and six. When you look at it, it could have been. Could, could have been as much as eight wins. There was a, there was a possibility there. I think that's going to go a long way. I don't think it's going to give us every recruit that we want, but I think we're going to be okay. But it's not just players who are leaving the program. Uh, our, line, nice. our, our linebacker coach entered the portal, and by entered the portal, I mean he got hired by another school. Chris Marv obviously was hired as the defense coordinator at Virginia Tech. So here's my question to you, Logan. When will Randy Shannon officially be hired as the linebacker coach for Florida State? Because I've been saying this, Randy Shannon is a is a unused resource right now in that coaching staff. 
Yeah, no. Randy Shannon is very highly respected on that team. I think things wouldn't be shocked if they go official tomorrow, latest Friday. Um, I think they're close to finishing up things and negotiations on that contract. But having Randy Shannon recruiting ties along with his experience, being a linebackers coach, you've got a former head coach being at the linebacker spot. Um, and from what I've heard internally, uh, a lot of the staff, along with players, really respect Randy Shannon. Some are making their decision on if they're staying at Florida State if Randy Shannon gets promoted to linebackers coach. So that enough just tells me that internally, at least for Florida State in the program, it's, it would be a big get to go ahead and announce this and get it over with and uh, name Randy Shannon the linebackers coach internally. That I mean, that. that the team is all for it, but whenever you look on the outside recruiting wise, Randy Shannon, a lot of people know that name. And so recruiting wise, and like we talked about earlier, how thin mm-hmm. Florida state is at linebacker. Um, you know, Chris Marv came in and he wasn't, you know, recruiting guru to say that, but you know, he was a solid coach. That's why he's mm-hmm. highly respected. And that's why he got the gig that he did at Virginia tech and wish him all the best. Um, and, but he just his talent wasn't there with recruiting and for in order to do this in college and definitely for a school that's been struggling in the linebacker department for years and years and years now, that's, there's gotta, you gotta have that. And that's what Randy Shannon brings to the table. And Chris Marv, you know, there's talks, there was an article we put out a couple of weeks ago about the NFL, NFL one of the writers at NFL network named, Chris Marv is being a, one of those young future coaches that will be in the NFL coaching. So kind of saw, kind of felt this one coming. I think a lot of people were definitely shocked by it to see him go and get that Virginia tech mm-hmm. job, but it kind of fixed him perfectly. He doesn't have to key in on recruiting as much um, and he can do his thing, but Randy Shannon coming in is going to be very nice. I think for Florida state, like I said, very well respected. And I think more than anything on the recruiting trail is going to help because now we got to see some of the photos of him and in, in, in home visits. And we are like, yeah, something is going on there because he's not supposed to be doing that as an analyst going and doing in home visits, visiting recruits. So uh, I think this is, uh, this would be a great, great um, upgrade there in the linebacker department from the coaching side of things. Yeah, boxing monster, you hit the nail on the head. We talk about it. Bradley Jennings Jr. down here at the University of Miami. Max Johnson and his brother at LSU. Yeah. It's 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 Devin Bush at Michigan. Yeah, it's getting annoying. Yeah, I mean, there's so many you're looking at. We'll get into it here in a few, I'm sure, but Julian Mm -hmm. Armella, Mm -hmm. Marvin Jones Jr. Could you have a chance with the Johnson brothers? I don't know, but really those two with Armella and Marvin Jones Jr., those are some big time got to get them. And right now, I feel good about Florida State with Julian Armella just because of the things that have happened to the schools. I mean, look at Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley moving on to USC. You're Logan, looking at, huh? Logan, don't give it away. Don't give away your predictions. We have to keep the viewers. When are we going to start? We're ready. Well, well we've, got a, we've got a process. You know what goes on here. They've got to hit. They have to hit fifty likes before we start giving predictions on if they're committing to Florida State or not. Fifty I mean, likes, like folks. We're at twenty right now. They got a. They got some oh, work to do. Man, this Come is on, not man. with all, almost a hundred watching and twenty likes. Guys, you know what? We don't. It's needed. It's needed. This is the time we need it, guys. We're almost at the half hour point of the show, so for the final time as a Florida State undergrad, before next week he does the show as a Florida State graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, giving his graduation speech on oh, why you wow. should hit the like button. This is his graduation speech on why you should hit the like button, Logan Robinson. You need to hit the like button just because I graduated. That's mainly the number one thing there. You need to do it because it took everything imaginable for it to happen. I mean, I'm just surprised we made it here. But now we get to celebrate. And by sending a celebration, you don't even have to send me anything. But if you hit the like button, it makes everything. You can make up for it. There. We're, at, we're at 41. People kind of want to know the recruiting updates here and what's going on. You're, you're going to get – Look at this. Get, I knew this go. was coming. Yeah. You're going to get something like this. You're oh, we're hot in the middle name. <laughs> you're going to get something like this. You can get like me. You can do the frame that has a doke right there. You know? Yeah. I got to get the updated doke. 
Absolutely. Oh, no, this is, yeah, this is old. This is when I was in school. That was, that's why I say I got to do it my yeah. time. I can't yeah. do that old, sh- uh, I about said. Wow. You can say it. Go ahead. I'll yeah. like Old stuff. That's, uh, your, that's your we gotta... right there. But, uh, <laughs> but no, no, no. Yeah, you're going to get it. You're right. So here, fans, here's what we need. Where there was a debate before the show started. I think Logan should walk on Saturday. Mark is kind of iffy, and because Mark didn't walk through his, I walked. Through it really him. depends on Florida State. They're going to get me, allow me to go. But that's fine. But here, here, viewers, should Logan walk this Saturday at his graduation ceremony? Put it in the comments section. Should Logan be sober enough to walk and shake the hand <laughs> with the new? Yeah, president? I was going to say, or should I party? Should we party from like noon to four a.m.? Yeah, because you've never done anything after party until four a.m. <laughs> you've never done this show drunk before. Okay. Cool. <laughs> So, what what time's the ceremony? Uh, I believe two o'clock. Two o'clock. Okay, you're out of there by four. Yeah. Yeah. You've day drank before. <sighs> We're gonna see. There could be breaking. There's just, just so many things that could happen on next Saturday. Is there any football games going on? So Army, I have an excuse. Army, Army no. Navy. I love that game. Army I love Navy. That game. I love okay, that game. I can't one. miss that. Hey, yes, you can. Moving on. You need to walk <laughs> Army Navy, that's it. <clears throat> Heisman Everyone. Trophy ceremony. Heisman Trophy ceremony. Oh, my God. Yeah, I really I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't Bryce Young's going to win that one. Yeah, I'm going to go and call it like it is. All right, Logan. Here's my question to you. Uh-oh. Right now, <sighs> Florida State is the only one of the big three programs in the state that doesn't have a new head coach. Miami hired Mario Cristobal. Florida hired Billy Napier. Which one are you more concerned about right now? Uh, Cristobal, I think, just because I think he's a smart guy. They're gonna put he's gonna bring a good amount of his staff from Oregon over there to Florida. I wouldn't say I'm like, oh my god, this is it, it's over. Um, I think it's gonna take a little while for them. They've lost commits. They've already lost commits with Manny Diaz being there. Uh, so you're gonna find out. I got a lot of work to do there. Just mm-hmm. on the other side, Billy Napier. I mean, while we've been on the show, it just broke that they're hiring um, Corey Raymond, who was LSU's um, DB coach over mm-hmm. there, which is definitely a big time grab for Billy Napier. That's definitely a big one because other than that, the other hires that he's been making hasn't haven't been splash hires. Um, this one right here is a big one that will definitely help Florida in recruiting defensive backs and other things of that nature on defense and just a good recruiting tool. But, you know, right now I'm, I'm be a little bit more worried about if I'm, if I'm worried at all, it'd be more sided towards Mario Cristobal and being down there um, down South with you. Not so worried about Billy Napier right now. Um, I never really was. I think Florida went too quick with picking him up. I, I, I think maybe there could have been some talks with other coaches, but, I just think they went really too quick with it. I don't think that was their best hire that they could have had. Yeah, I, 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 I'm the same way. I look at Billy Napier a lot in the same kind of style as a Mike Norvell, kind of coming from that, that group of five program, coming in, had a big time job at a group of five program, did a great job at, at Louis, excuse me, Louisiana, did a great job there and parlayed it into this job. When I look at Mario Cristobal, and I've known Mario Cristobal since he was a coach at FIU. So he's a great guy, comes from a great family. He is he's a guy where he's going to bring to Miami his discipline. And that's what Miami has been lacking of late. He's going to bring a discipline program. He's going to bring kind of that old school swag, but it's that swag that has credibility because he has national titles that he won as a player at Miami. Obviously, he has a... a, a not a great winning percentage. 508 is his winning percentage. That being said, a lot of those were losses at FIU. It was not, it was not a good tenure at FIU as his coach, and he's been a lot better at Oregon. My concern is not so much about Mario Cristobal as the head coach of Miami, because I think he has the ability to maybe lead Miami back to national title prominence. It's going to be what happens this coming season, because remember, this coming season, they play at Texas a and They play at Clemson. They host us. They host Pitt. They host North Carolina. They travel to Virginia Tech. Is Miami better than a lot of teams on their schedule next year? Yes, absolutely. Was Miami better than a lot of teams on their schedule this year? Yes, and they still went 7-5. and five. So here's the question. I've been hearing it since Randy Shannon was hired. I've been hearing it when Al Golder was hired. I was hearing it when Mark Rick was hired. I heard it when Manny Diaz was hired. Yeah. The U is back. The U is back. The U is back. And now it's 
it's literally the last time they won their conference was in 2003. Mario Cristobal needs time. Will Miami fans actually give him time? That's going to be the biggest question because they haven't given any of their coach time. And, and Mark has said it before. You cannot keep firing coaches after three years and expect new different results. Yeah, no, I think right now you're looking at Florida, who's what, in the 70s and recruiting rankings, too, right now. I mean, that's understandable. It's a transition class. It is what it is. But, I mean, Billy Napier couldn't even keep uh, – I don't have his name down right now. Where is it at? I'll find it in just a second. But they didn't have – they couldn't lock – he couldn't lock down the longtime quarterback commit there that was going to be their future guy uh, for the Florida Gators. And so I think there's a lot of work to, there to be doing on the recruiting trail for – Billy Napier in Gainesville, and they've got a lot of work to do. Um, I, I think Mario Cristobal has definitely uh, has that name. He has that pretty pedigree in Oregon of being a strict guy, um, discipline. He tries to bring discipline to his team, and him having past experience playing along with playing at Miami. I think that's just that's why I think he's more of a bigger threat than Billy Napier right now. So this being more of a national topic, uh, as you can imagine, I've got something to say about this. Not that I haven't talked about it for like 10 hours <laughs> over the course of the last three days. But the one thing that I'll say is that um, if you look at the Miami football head coaching hires mm -hmm. since their last national championship, none of them, aside from Mark Richt, let's take him out for just a second, none of them have accomplished anything at the power five level, either before the Miami job or after the Miami job, mm -hmm. they, they, their coaching hires have been horrendous. Mm -hmm. Mark Richt was a different situation. It was a good hire. He didn't accomplish what was expected. It was obviously a short tenure. None of us saw that coming. I think maybe what we've seen, unfortunately from his health mm -hmm. status since then, may have played into the energy and the effort that he was able to give that job. He still brought in a top 10 recruiting class, still led them to a first 10 win season and orange bowl berth for the first time in forever. So he, he was off to a decent start. And then I just think um, he wasn't prepared to, it, it takes a lot of energy and effort to be a uh, power five uh, head coach now they hire a guy who I'm not going to sell him as some great coach uh, by any stretch, but he has accomplished at Oregon. He has taken a decent program and upgraded it somewhat. He's not, they've not astronomically taken off, but he has brought in the best recruiting class in the Pac-12 three consecutive seasons, has won the conference twice, has won the Rose Bowl. So they're bringing in somebody who's shown that they're capable finally brought in somebody with a track record this is a to use to use the term and I, i've used this the past two days it's a high risk move with the possibility of a high reward you figure in money wise and and mark mark has said it correctly miami doesn't spend money on coaches miami has never really gone out and spent big money on a coaching hire that's just because that's not what miami does they put their money towards their academics they put the money towards investing in the Cedars Medical Center, essentially nearly bankrupted the school. Now that money, that's starting to make some money, but they still are in debt over that. With contract, with buyouts, with incentives, with coaches, the promises of what it's going to, for the coaching staff and whatnot, it's in about $115 million, if not more, that they are investing in bringing Mario Cristobal in. It's, it's a very high risk to do that right now, but it could lead to a high reward. But the question I go back to, can Miami fans be patient enough to realize it's not going to be turned around overnight? That's the biggest question. That's been Miami's biggest problem, dating back to probably the middle of the Coker years. What do you consider turning it around? I think Miami fans, and I say this objectively, this is somebody who's, who covers the team, not saying this is a Florida State grad, it's somebody who covers the Miami team more on a consistent basis. Miami fans need to accept if they go, let's say, 8-4 and four next year, and let's say they lose to Texas a and let's say they lose to Clemson, you know, let's say they lose to, you know, two out of three between us, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech, just using those as examples. I think 8-4 and four is a step up. By year two is when they need to win the Coastal Division or at least be competitive in the Coastal Division race. 
and get into that ACC championship game. And then by year three, they need to be an ACC title contender. If this coming season, let's say they, they regress and go back to, or stay seven and five or regress down to six and six, that's where the problem's going to come into play. Miami's had the same problem that we've had at Florida State. There's been so many times where we've talked about Florida State playing down to the level of their competition. Miami this season played down to the level of their competition. Did Miami have more talent than Virginia? Yes. Did Miami have more talent than Florida State? Yes. Did Miami lose to both of them? Absolutely. There's, sure. no, reason, there's no reason Miami should have had any less than nine wins this past season with the talent Miami had on their field. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That said, they went seven and five. For, if, for as marginal as they looked, they went seven and five. And they played Alabama and Michigan State non-conference. So they had two very difficult non-conference games. They went seven and five. So they only lost three games in conference. So they went five and three. The the division winner went six and two in the conference. So they only finished one game back and they beat most likely the two best teams in conference on their schedule, NC State and Pitt. So if they just have capable coaching, they sh- they should have gone nine and three this year. If they beat Virginia or Florida State, just win one of those two games, they win the Coastal Division because they have the tiebreaker over Pitt. That would give them Absolutely. Six conference wins. That's so how that's close where. they were. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. capable coaching, not great coaching, not Nick Saban coaching, just capable a capable coaching staff in that awful division mm-hmm. should get them nine wins. Well, one thing that Mario Cristobal on the recruiting side of things, his biggest advantage probably grabbing some of those big time recruits or the, was the uniforms. And we know for sure that that's not going to work in Miami Adidas. That ain't going to cut it. So that's, that's a, that's a pivotal but, thing there, Mark. But I will tell you right now. I'm, if I'm you're joking. telling me it is, it is. I'm joking. I'm joking. And one of the things I'm, I'm just on a little shade. To, uh, our friend but, Cam. No, but one of your, one of the things that, that you talked about a little bit, I think one of the things that, that Mario will help with is recruiting. And I think there's a lot of Miami fans down here. And obviously, you know, he's married into a big money, multi-billion dollar booster, Miami grad and John Ruiz, who's already talking about this asinine idea of tearing down Coral Gables High School to build a stadium there. (laughs) That would be absolutely the dumbest idea based on location, but we can talk about that at another time. They, I think they're frustrated when they see the recruits leaving Miami. And the recruits are leaving Miami in droves. They're going to the big programs like Alabama, like Ohio State, uh, like Oklahoma, Marquise Brown going to Oklahoma, the Bose is going to Ohio State, all Alabama coming in and taking South Florida recruits. But they're also going to Florida State. Florida State in this signing class alone has multiple players from Broward and Miami-Dade County. And at one point, the University of Miami had one. That is frustrating to Miami fans because they are back to that old school philosophy of close off Miami. Crystal is going to keep some recruits down here. But just like what we talked about with Florida State's recruiting, which we're going to get to next year in a moment, Miami needs to win these games. Miami has to eventually get back to the ACC championship game within the next two years. If they don't, the question is, was this move worth it? Just uh, real quick, I want to correct myself because Luke has corrected me. That's right. So Pitt lost to Miami, and they lost to Western Michigan outside the conference. Mm-hmm. So they went 10-2 uh, and two regular Seven. season, 7-1 and one in the conference. So Miami needed more than that, even though they beat Pitt head to head. Well, maybe if Diaz knew to call a timeout, they would have beat us. You never know. And if their kicker wouldn't have hit the goalpost, but this is part of football, yeah. so that's what happens. Oh, uh, I, I don't feel the sympathy for anyone who misses a game on a kick. Sorry, as a Florida State grad, it's by <laughs> yeah, law. Yeah, I'm talking I'm to the allowed, wrong I'm crowd allowed, here. Yeah, I'm not allowed to feel any sympathy. Ooh, boo hoo, you lost. I think we're up to like 12, but okay. Uh, I have found out since we've been on the show here, YouTube has alerted me that we've reached uh, 10 million views on the uh, main channel. Mazel for real? Uh, Mazel Where did they do that? that? That does not even include uh, our team channels. So that's just the main channel there, 10 million oh, yeah. views. Oh, we got yeah. Let's get 10 million Congratulations. Let's get 10 million more. Thank you. Congratulations, Mark. We're going to get that. We're going to get you 10 million next month by Jason saying a lot of ridiculous things. I can, I can accomplish that. Yeah. That uh, Logan's going to clip and put on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I think we can do that. Yeah, I like that. I like your TikTok. Style. We put on TikTok. If we put some of these clips on TikTok, then boom. We need confetti. Ooh, I like your style on that one. I have, right. I have some Christmas stuff in the back here, but I don't think it's showing the full angle of my... Uh... 
You didn't give me anything for Hanukkah, but we're going to move on from that one for one moment. All right. Oh, I know. I messed, I messed up. We're one Sorry. Week away. We're one week away. Ten from million. Recruiting day. We're one week away from recruiting day, Logan. All right. Let's do it. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through a list of some of the recruits, some of them who, who have not committed to schools, some who are committed to Florida State, and I want to know from you what your chances are of Florida State either keeping them or landing them in some way. Okay. All right. All right. Yep. So, obviously, the two five stars the Florida State has right now, Travis Hunter, who yep. originally, from, originally from Palm Beach County, now in high school in Georgia, Sam McCall from up in Lakeland, Lake yep. Gibson High School. Georgia's been going hard after Travis Hunter. Georgia's been making a hard push towards Travis Hunter. A couple schools have yep. gone after McCall. I think Hunter is a is a solid Florida State commit. Is it is it one hundred percent? Do you think Georgia may come in and make a last minute push, or what are your thoughts on both those guys? I think Travis Hunter is ten ten lock for Florida State. I think that I think Georgia was trying their hardest. Um, I think Florida State is in a great spot with Trav. Um, he really likes Norvell. Uh, mm -hmm. Him and Norvell and Woodson are definitely two coaches that I think Travis Hunter is in love with. His biggest thing is wanting to play for Florida State. That is his dream since day one. I'm sure mm -hmm. Georgia tried to throw a couple bags at him. You know, he was going to visit, too, some of these games because he, I think, just likes football. And also there's some FSU targets, too, that were visiting some mm -hmm. of these games. So maybe to get in the – get into the ear of those was kind of just, you know, doing some networking there and maybe trying to help out the Florida state staff. But um, I don't, I was never really too worried about that. I think mm -hmm. Travis Hunter from things that we got to hear internally, he was always going to be a lock. The biggest thing that I was worried about was his injury that he had mm -hmm. earlier in his high school uh, season, this past season that they're still going for state and look at him. He's scoring interceptions, whatever the hell, how many passing yards mm -hmm. he's getting also throwing touchdowns um he's playing right now for a state title which is awesome to see he's just a competitor like that freak 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 athlete so travis hunter lock and i think i think sam mccall tweeted yesterday that he's signing everything's locked down it's going to be florida state so you're going to be able to have two five stars coming in two guys extremely talented two guys that can play offense and i think sam mccall can do offense defense he's just a special athlete too so that's those are two time, two big time gets at Mike Norvell, and definitely Adam Fuller are getting on defense. You know, Travis can play wide receiver. And I'm sure he'll play. We'll get to see him play wide receiver. We most definitely will in Tallahassee a few times. But as a DB, that's where his main strength is. But I mean, he got to show us too this last year. He can play wide receiver, and he can be the top wide receiver in the class too. It, it's freaky. He's it, just a freak athlete. I mean. Just kind of put him wherever you want. It just depends on how good his endurance is. Now, down my way, two guys from my area that we talked about earlier in the show, two mm -hmm. legacy commitments, Marvin Jones Jr. from American Heritage in Plantation, Julian Armella from St. Thomas Aquinas, who St. Thomas will be playing for a championship down here two days after signing day. Both of them have Florida State in their final group. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think Florida State only lands one of them. I think Armella comes to Florida State. I think th there was a chance Armella would have gone to LSU had had Ed Ogeron stayed on as head coach over there. But I think Florida State made a last minute push. I think he goes to Florida State. I think Florida State is still in it for Marvin Jones Jr. I just have a feeling like he is going to end up at Alabama. I think it's going to come down to Alabama and Florida State. I think Alabama is going to edge out. Trust me, I would love nothing more because I will be there at his commitment. I'm shooting that one. I would love nothing more. Then for him to put on the, the garden and gold hat, but I just have a strange feeling like it's going to be Alabama. What do you think, Logan? Yeah, I think, you know, Florida State did about as good as they could this season. They could have, you know, I don't think that – there's some things they could have fixed. But getting that Miami win saved a lot of things, in my opinion. And also you're seeing Oklahoma – and that whole Lincoln Riley thing going on. I know this past a uh, couple days ago, he went to go visit USC with Lincoln Riley. Mm -hmm. um, and Alabama is Alabama. Nick Saban, they'll be doing an in-home visit this week along with Mike Norvell. That's going to be interesting to see how that goes and who's going to win out of that. But, you know, I think his family would love for him to go to Florida State. But, you know, he's going to ball wherever he wants to go. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is, you know, he's visited Florida State out of almost every school that he's gone to in the past year. I mean, he was there at 12 o'clock 
at Midnight Madness to be a part of also Julian Armella that was there. I mean, Florida State did the best that they could with both of these guys and being able to have Marvin Jones Jr. over here in Tallahassee, I don't know, three plus times, four times um, in the last year. I mean, it's definitely impressive and Florida State has done everything imaginable as they can. And, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see. I, I think that's just going to come down to like the last – 48, 24 hours, we'll probably get a good feeling on where he's going to be going. And, you know, if it happens to be Florida State, that would be big time. The biggest win for Mike Norbell, uh, which, which is crazy to think. You know, you already got Travis Hunter. <laughs> you already got Travis Hunter, but Marvin Jones Jr. is just – he's just been that guy. Since you've already got Travis Hunter and kind of locked that down, the biggest focus has been towards Marvin Jones Jr. And not only just because of legacy, you're extremely talented, but much needed. You're losing – here, what Thomas, about, Jermaine Johnson. What about Armella? Armella, I think Florida State is in a really good spot after about last week. I think things really switched to where Florida State. I think really when Alabama wasn't pursuing him as much and they felt pretty comfortable with what they already had, um, wasn't going to make room for Armella. I think uh, Florida State got put into a really good spot, and I think he ends up at, at Florida State, which that is also a big time grab there for a really talented offensive lineman. Five star, four star, whatever you want to put him. That's going to be a guy that is going to be a contributor really early on at Florida State and big win for Coach Atkins. I think with LSU, that whole thing going on with Coach O and also losing, I believe, uh, their offensive line coach, if I'm correct. And then the whole Florida thing going on, uh, you know, Den Mullen no longer being there, offensive line coach changing. Uh, you know, it just kind of turned perfectly to where Florida State could take advantage of it. It really was going to be, I think, LSU and FSU at the end. And with Coach O and that whole situation going down, it gave Florida State a lot of lead way to get inside and, and work with Armella. So what about we'll Trey? see. It's going to be a fascinating day. I'm going to be texting oh. you, Jason, and tell me what's, what, had, what hats are on the table. We got to see what brand – what, where are they at left, right? Is it in the middle? I will, I, I, I will definitely – we will let you know. We will keep you updated on that one. Uh, Trey West, uh, lineman from Georgia. Georgia oh, Tyree, commit. yeah. Tyree West, I apologize. Yeah. Tyree West from uh, lineman Georgia commit. Yeah. There's Another one. smoke about Florida State maybe possibly getting him. Can Florida State steal one from Georgia? Ooh, or do you think he's I, committed to Georgia permanently? All right, so I was at practice the day that he came and visited. He got to visit the whole practice. He was there with Ryan Bartow. Um, and Kenyatta Watson, your two uh, Florida and well, not well, recruiting guys, gurus, high school relations guys. So I got to see Tyree West, and I mean, maybe 90% of the whole time he was smiling, uh, enjoying the music during the practices, going and dapping up a lot of the players, getting hugs. I think Adam Fuller almost picked him up whenever he saw him at the beginning of the practice. And then he went over and got the, went and saw the, spent a lot of time with Odell Hagan's. Norvell spent a lot of time with them and then also brought him over to Jermaine Johnson a few times for a little easy recruiting advertising there. Um, but I, I think Florida State is going to make a flip here on Tyree West, five-star uh, defensive lineman, which would be a, it'd be an in immediate impact to Florida State. He'd be playing in that first game against LSU um, next season. Duquesne is our first game. I keep on thinking that it's uh, uh, that it's the season opener. Duquesne is our first game, folks. LSU will be hopefully will be one and zero. That's we'll the lamest thing ever. Hopefully, we'll actually beat our FCS team this year. So hopefully, we can go along those lines. Maybe that's the biggest thing. You needed to always flip flop it. Absolutely, one hundred percent. All right, let's go through real quick. Last three guys. You mentioned his name, Kevin Coleman, five star wide receiver from Woo. East St. Louis. Is Florida State going to go into the Lou and be proud? Oh, man, I don't know. This one's interesting. I, I still have felt for a long while Nate is Nate and Dustin are the guys for this. Really, Nate, because he, he's had a good scoop on his recruitment since the beginning. Oregon with Cristobal leaving there. Now is Miami in the mix. I'm not too entirely sure, but Florida State has been the lean for Kevin Coleman. I do know that for since the spring game. I've known that. Um, and a really good lean. There's been a lot of Oregon love. Now Mario Cristobal goes to Miami. Is there? Does he seem like maybe he wanted to go far away from home? I don't know. I still think Florida State is really in the mix here. Got to see Norvell and Dugans just go visit him earlier today. I think I, if I were to put my money on it right now, like right now, I'd say Florida State right mm -hmm. now just because of 
I think it was more of a bigger threat of Mario Cristobal if he would have been staying at Miami than anything. But mm. the two four seven crystal ball is five for five FSU. So far, I'm liking his odds so far. All right, last two guys we got yeah. two four star wide receivers: Santana Fleming from down mm-hmm. my way in South Florida, then yeah. Adam Hopkins. Two wide receivers, two four stars. Can Florida State land both of them? And I feel like it's important that Florida State gets at least one of them if Kevin Coleman doesn't come. Uh, I think for Fleming, I think it's a Florida State lean here. Mm-hmm. I think it's been that way for a good long while. I think a really good long while. I think Florida mm-hmm. State has a really good chance of landing him. That's a really talented wide receiver who can go one on one with guys and kind of stretch the field. So I think Florida State lean there. Um, and then a new one here with Hopkins. I mean, this is a twenty. This well, more of a, a younger guy, twenty twenty three. Um, mm-hmm. But I think he's got a good relationship there with Dugans along with Marcus Woodson. Um, it does help too. He's kind of local there, up there in Georgia, just right outside of Tallahassee and Thomasville. So Florida State, you know, in the future there, I, I think Florida State has a good chance of getting one of the top twenty, top fifteen wide receivers um, in the twenty twenty three class. But there, there's a lot of things. I mean, there's. I don't think. I think this thing is anywhere close to being done. This will be one of the most entertaining early. This is really now that I feel like the national signing day because early signing day takes over now from mm-hmm. national signing day because guys want to get in and be done with it and also get an early enroll. But not to mention early enroll, there are so many early enrollees that Florida State is going to have compared to last year. It is going to be a big time factor for Florida State heading into next season because some of these guys are going to be immediate impacts and we'll keep an eye on Destin Hill, the unicorn, mm-hmm. the literal unicorn that – we don't know if he's real. I do. They are still expecting him to be on campus next month. So he's I'll alive. tell you what. He's I'll tell alive. you what. He's alive. He's alive. We'll see, though. It seems like guy. everybody's trying to fight for a source there. But, man, once a picture goes out of him being on campus, you might as well just won, a, won the ACC, won a national championship because, man, people are really excited about having him on the field because that wide receiver room, if you're able to grab – some of these cats at wide receiver. How about how about, how about how about we start by being bowl eligible first? Okay. Well, we you gotta have you gotta have these guys to be bowl basis. eligible. Bowl, bowl eligibility first, guys. That's, that's what we're gonna start with. Well, I can't be happy about Dustin Hill. I'm happy about Dustin Hill, but you're already claiming we're gonna be ACC champs. And no, 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 no. I was saying that would be the same. It would feel the same if you had won an ACC championship if Dustin Hill is on campus in the more. I feel like a lot of Florida State fans would be going crazy. Same with Marvin Jones Jr. I think there would be right. cars in downtown honking their horns if Marvin Jones Jr. decides to pick Florida State over Nick Saban. Imagine that. Nick Saban gets stuffed in a locker from Norvell. What would you say, Jason? What's that? What would you say if uh, Norvell did that to Nick Saban? You would have to say... If Norvell stuffed Saban in a locker? Yeah, that's the term for if he beats him in the recruitment I, of landing. No, I, I know what the term is, <laughs> Just, buddy. I, I, no, don't get me wrong. I think I would say this before we go. I think Marvin Jones could still choose Florida State. I just think right now, if you're saying, yeah, gun to my head, who is he going to go with? I think Alabama yeah. is slightly. I think it's sixty forty Alabama right now. Can Florida State still turn in a week? Yeah, I think it's enough of a that that tie with his dad. I think is enough to if Norvell can make a good push. I could see him coming to Florida State. I am stepping off. You guys can wrap up the show and make sure that Logan has sufficient time to pitch his discord. Oh yeah. Now is the perfect time. Uh, For the final time as an undergrad, go. As an undergrad. Guys, if you haven't yet, make sure you guys join our Patreon. It's blowing. I mean, it's going crazy right now. I mean, there's so much scoop going in and out that you can't even really your, your phone battery. I, I suggest getting a good charger because there's so much going on right now, but patreoncom slash no game day. And even one of our bigger things, we're now texting you personally to your phone. If you text me eight, five, zero, six, one, six, eight, six, six, one, we're going straight to your phone with live early signing day updates, scoop what's happening, rumors, what's going on, alleged rumors, what's happening. We're going to give you guys the latest for the next week or so and moving on. Um, but yeah, text on number eight, five, oh, six, one, six, eight, six, six, one. Do it right now. You might get a little treat. I don't know. Two, eight, one, three, three, oh, eight, zero, zero, four. Don't put your number on no, there. No, that was first of all, it's Mike Jones's number. Let's calm down. 
Oh, oh, sorry. Next, was... next, next Wednesday, we will bring you all the recap, all the action. Hopefully, Florida State can can bring in the class that we all want, and more importantly, Logan will be getting. That's right. Well, in, a few, in six weeks, six weeks, I'll I'll be able to have that. I'll frame it right here, and I'll put a big billboard for Jason in an era going down, and my mom for Jason and my mom. Logan Robinson, old game day. <sighs> Let's do this again next week. Everybody wants us to party now that Mark's gone. We we, we won't do him like that. He's no, a busy we're not, man. No, we're not. We don't want to get busted. We do not want to get him busted. <laughs> We've already done that before. Guys, next week, complete recap of everything. See you later.